So exclusion and limitation clauses, again, they act sort of as a defence. And you can always sort of see these, they, they sort of go in problem questions. It's always at the end, you know, in a, on a receipt or something, and it says we're not going to be liable because um, we said we, we weren't going to pay you if this happened, or we're not going to pay you this amount if this happened. Well, the starting point is, in most cases, it's not going to be applicable. It's not going to be a good exclusion clause, it's not going to be valid, but it's up to you to show you're working out, isn't it, get those marks. So exclusion clauses remove liability, exemption clauses limit liability, or limitation clauses limit liability. Now, of course, this time we do need to do three things. We need to identify, is the clause incorporated into the contract? Now, in things like receipts, you would expect some terms to be on there, and so you would conclude that it is incorporated. If it's a signed document, it definitely is incorporated. If it's not signed, but it should have been brought to the party's attention, then it may not be incorporated. And so like Ollie and Marlborough Court Hotel, when the sign was on the back of the door, as opposed to the front desk of the hotel. Secondly, we need to look at how the, the clause is constructed or interpreted. Now, this is only a problem if there's ambiguity. If it's very, very clear, then you just say, the clause is clear, so is interpreted in favour of the defendant. It is part of the contract. If it's unclear, though, uh, in any way, now it probably won't be. I mean, to be fair, it's usually just on the receipt that says it very clearly, but just on the off chance. Now, when we use the contra profferentum rule, okay, so if there's ambiguity, it goes against the party that's seeking to rely upon it. And so it probably won't be part of the contract. Now, the only way that rule is going to be used is if it's on, say, question seven, which says, why is this exclusion clause not going to be valid? Okay, but we'll focus on those bigger problem questions for this PowerPoint and, and video. So the impact then on of statute law and exclusion clauses, uh, this is the big one. Essentially, if it's part of the consumer rights, which it usually is, okay, there is the Unfair Contract Terms Act. And now, in, on the off chance, you get a sort of question where individuals are negotiating and, and one hands another a slip of paper which says I'm not going to be liable, then okay, we might need to use the Unfair Contract Terms Act. However, the pattern is that it's always connected to consumer rights. It's sometimes connected to goods, it's sometimes connected to services, and you need to be able to differentiate there. The third thing then is, is what is the impact of it? Is the clause valid or not? The answer is, in short, no, it's not. Section 31 tells us that liability cannot be excluded or restricted for sections 9, 10 and 11. Section 57 liability says liability cannot be excluded or restricted for sections 49 and 52. And on the, in the case you might get a question on restriction of negligent liability. Again, section 65 says you cannot exclude liability or restrict liability due to death or personal injury. Now that one is only going to be in a short form question, the other two are going to be longer term, but the short answer is they won't be valid, usually.